Good evening and welcome to another session of the Comfort Verses in Context. The focus of our study tonight is clarifying a cliché which is Jesus is my blood donor. Now maybe you have heard this phrase or you have seen it in Facebook posts, t-shirt labels, caps, and artworks. And maybe you've seen variants like a blood donor saved my life dash Jesus. My life is saved by a blood donor. That donor's name is Jesus. Now, in as much as blood donors do save lives, is there something amiss with the statement, Jesus is my blood donor? Now, on the outset, it seems that there's nothing wrong. But, my prayer for you tonight is that we would examine this Christian cliché and see whether it's right to call Jesus Christ as our blood donor. Okay? So let us begin by asking this question. What is a blood donor? Okay. Wikipedia defines the process of blood donation as, and I quote, occurs when a person voluntarily has blood drawn and used for transfusions and or made into biopharmaceutical medications. Maybe you notice the phrase voluntary. Now, hence, a blood donor is that person who voluntarily has his own blood drawn and is used for blood transfusions or made into biopharmaceutical medications. So that's what a blood donor is. Now let's ask another question. What are the adverse effects of blood donations to blood donors? Does it have an effect on one who is giving blood? Now according to healthline.com, the following are the adverse effects that blood donors may or may not experience. Let me read. Number one, bruising. Number two, continued bleeding. Number three, dizziness, lightheadedness, and nausea. Number four is pain. And number five, physical weakness. So, giving blood has some possible adverse effects on the blood donor. But possible, not and it's not that worse, okay? Let's ask number three. How effective is the blood donated? Now, according to the American Red Cross, one donation can save as many as three lives. According to carterbloodcare.org, blood donations has saved 4.5 million American lives, saving 600 to 800 patients a day. It's quite remarkable, isn't it? Now, here's a question. Are there risks to the recipient of the blood donation? Last time, we asked if there's an adverse effect to the one giving blood. How about to the one receiving blood? Are there risks? Now, according to clevelandclinic.org, there are precautions to screening the blood donated. But even so, there is an extremely rare and small chance for some diseases to be passed. The figures are HIV is 1 in 1.5 million. So small. Hepatitis C is 1 in 1 1.2 million. Hepatitis B, 1 in 293,000. So the odds are actually quite safe. The website also added this word saying, you're most likely to get struck by lightning than to get a disease from a transfusion. The precautions health workers take have helped make transfusions very safe. So there you have it. Blood transfusions are safe, minimal effect on the giver, and clevelandclinic.org also states that people can react in various ways in blood transfusions. Reactions that people experience may include breathing troubles, fevers, chills, or rashes, 
hemolytic transfusion reaction where your immune system tries to destroy the transfused blood cells. But most people don't have any of these reactions. So, blood transfusions are relatively safe. Now, having answered those facts, let's begin to answer our main question in our study. Is Jesus our blood donor? Is Jesus our blood donor? Now, before we move any further, let me state up front that I believe that blood transfusion and blood donation are noble tasks and a noble work that had saved lives. I have, in my time, also asked for help in collecting blood so that it could help save a life. Blood donors do well in giving their blood to save lives. But I want us to see the contrast between a blood donor and the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you would stick and see the contrast. Now let's begin with the first. The contrast in the nature of blood donation and Christ's sacrifice. Now, blood donation is a medical and physical act. Did you remember the definition we read a while ago? The blood extracted from blood donors are used for transfusions and are made into biopharmaceutical medications. It's physical, literal blood in an act of a medical technology. Now, Christ's sacrifice entails the shedding of His blood on the cross is a legal and spiritual act. It is legal because the Lord God requires blood for the remission of sins. This was so from the very beginning. When Adam and Eve sinned, the Lord God covered them with animal skins. Now, tell me this. Can animal skins be peeled off an animal without the animal shedding blood? For this cause, we see also that Cain, Abel, and the generations after Adam and Eve knew that it is important to sacrifice an animal for their sins. A sacrifice is offered for sin. Now, in the dispensation of the law, the Lord through Moses initiated what is called the sacrificial system where for the sin of the nation, blood must be spilled. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 says this, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. All things I purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for this cause. We see that Jesus' death on the cross is actually a legal and a spiritual act. Now, for this cause, in the dispensation of grace, Christ died for our sins, shedding His blood on Calvary, that He may avail for us, number one, justification. We read in Romans chapter 5, verse 9. Let's turn to that. Romans chapter 5, verse 9. It says this, Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. The Lord's death availed justification for us. Number two, Christ's shedding of blood availed redemption for us. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, and we read these very words. In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. So, Christ's death on the cross availed for us redemption, justification. Number three, reconciliation to God. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. Just one chapter after the passage. It says, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, that pertains to us Gentiles, are made nigh or near by the blood of Christ. 
because of the death of Christ on the cross, we are justified, we are reconciled, and we are brought nigh or reconciled. Also, forgiveness of sins. According to Colossians 1.14, it says, In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Christ's death on the cross, His shedding of blood, availed for us justification, redemption, reconciliation, and now forgiveness of sins. Number five, peace with God. Let's read Colossians 1.20. It says, And having made peace through the blood of His cross, by Him to reconcile all things unto Himself, by Him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. So, Christ's shedding of blood, His death for our sins, was sufficient and is sufficient to get, to get for us justification, reconciliation, redemption, forgiveness, and peace with God. Jesus Christ, therefore, is more than a blood donor. Let's read Romans chapter 3, verse 24 to 25, and we would see these words. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set to be a propitiation through, the faith, through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Jesus Christ is more than a blood donor. He is the propitiation for our sins. So, let's move on and see the contrast of the extent. A blood donor may or may not experience some symptoms or adverse reactions. But I want you to see the contrast, okay? A story was told of a young girl that needed blood transfusion. It was an emergency and they were having a hard time finding a compatible blood type for her. So, the only one available was her brother's. So, the brother was asked, Are you willing to donate your blood? Give your blood to your sister? The brother heartily agreed. So, they set up the mechanisms and the blood was extracted from the brother going to the sister. Suddenly, the boy became silent. And then he asked the doctor, Doctor, when will I start to die? Now, that boy thought that when he gives his blood, he will die so that his sister may live. Now, it is noble for the boy to do that, but this is the truth of the blood donation. The donor doesn't die. I hope you get that one very clearly. The donor in the blood donation doesn't die. But Christ, in shedding His blood, died for our sins. But there's more. I want you to see also this. Not only did Jesus Christ die for our sins by shedding His blood, but 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says this, For He hath made Him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Now consider this. A blood donor does not take the sickness of the recipient of the blood upon himself, nor does the, nor does the recipient of the blood take upon himself the health of the blood donor. No. But Christ did something that a blood donor and recipient cannot do. Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, was made sin for us. That why, that's why when He died for our sins on the cross, shedding His blood, we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Christ took our sin we took Christ's righteousness. 
blood donations don't do that. Jesus Christ is more than a blood donor. He is the propitiation for our sins. Jesus' death on the cross, the shedding of His blood, is more than a blood donation. It is dying for our sins, being made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. So the last contrast we would see, the contrast of efficacy. Okay. Now without a doubt, blood transfusions save lives. That's a fact. But it does not 100% save lives. It does not with 0% casualty or harm. I've known of some people who receive blood donations who still died. It saves lives, but not all that receive the blood donations are saved. Because that's how it works. Now, Christ's death on the cross is 100% guaranteed to save all. And I, let me repeat that. Guaranteed to save all that put their trust in His finished work. And the basis for this guarantee would be, number one, the promises of God that cannot lie. Titus chapter 1 verse 2 says this, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. It's guaranteed that when you trust in Christ, His finished work on the cross, dying for our sins, being buried, and on the third day rising again for our justification, the promises of God that can apply guarantees absolute 100% salvation. Number two, this guarantee is based on the finished work of Christ. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7 reads, In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. Because Christ's finished work is past, we have, as in present, redemption through His blood. Jesus' work is final. Jesus' work is finished. Therefore, we have guaranteed salvation by trusting the gospel message, by trusting that what Jesus had done on the cross is sufficient for eternal salvation and justification. And number three, the seal of the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 to 14 says this, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. I hope you got that. We are sealed the moment we believe. We believe after we hear the gospel message of how Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures and that He was buried and that He rose again the third day. We hear, we believe, and we are sealed automatically. Sealed. And it says, until the redemption of the purchased possession. So, the seal is guaranteed to be absolute. Friends, when we trust in Christ's finished work, we are saved, guaranteed by the Godhead. So, Jesus Christ is more than a blood donor. He is the propitiation for our sin. Christ's death on the cross, the shedding of His blood, is more than just a blood donation. It is Him dying for our sins, being made sin for us, and that we might be made the righteousness of God and be justified before Him. And Christ's death is 100% effective for all who believes and trusts in His finished work as sufficient for eternal salvation and justification before God. That is Godhead guarantee. Now, as we reflect on these truths, we echo the heart of the hymn writer who wrote these words, and I quote, And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood 
Died he for me who caused him pain? For me who him to death pursued? Amazing love, how can it be that thou my God shouldst die for me? Amazing love, how can it be that thou my God shouldst die for me? Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, is more than a blood donor. Unlike a blood donor, He died for our sins. Unlike blood donations, its effectivity is 100%. Jesus Christ is more than a blood donor. He is the propitiation for our sins. So thank you very much for listening. We do hope to see you again next week in another session of the Comfort Verses in Context. And we hope to see you on Monday as we upload another video for the Family Equipping Ministry. And on Thursdays, we have our Ephesians Bible Study. So thank you very much for listening. Do have a nice day and the Lord bless you.